Okay, so when we last gathered the party were very quickly challenged by our favorite ladies, Tyr and Fien, and while the battle did not have a conclusive victor, it was revealed Tyr and Fien's true position in this in this world and the job that they hold. And while they did apologize to the party for hiding who and what they really were, it was all water under the bridge and everything continued on like normal. However, once that encounter came to an end and everyone left the special battle arena, Dreva approached the Mel and she stated in very clear terms, we need to talk. And a week has passed since that interaction because after Mel said that, she suddenly became overwhelmed by her own doing and decided to put it on hold. But our current scene opens up with Mel and Drava alongside everyone else enjoying a nice breakfast at the tavern before opening hours. And with that introduction of today's session out of the way, uh, you may speak. Hello. <laughs> okay. So... I'm sitting next to Dreva, right? Yeah, you and her are sharing the same table. Uh, so Dreva, what did you want to talk about, by the way? She sets her cup of coffee down on the table. Right. Um. So, last week after that show, shenanigan, whatever you want to call we found out what the girl's real purpose was and um the mother asked me if I wanted to join you all and I said yeah I um <sighs> you're the only one here that I've had the most time speaking to and getting to know and whatnot and I've I've seen you hold your own in a fight and to be as blunt as possible I want to um ah, damn it girl just say it I want to experience that personally myself and by that, I mean that I want to have a a reasonable uh, training fight with you, if that makes sense. Okay. Yes, I'm actually very down to do that. You agreed to that way faster than what I thought you would. Um, I mean, anything for a fight to be completely fair. Yeah, I guess. Well, uh, if you don't mind, uh, follow me, I guess. It's and good. both of you finish your breakfast and. Hey, Rick! You bid adieu to. Uh, the rest of the gang for the time being as hello, hello. you and Dreva make way to the location of your battle. Also, hey Rick, we'll pop. I apologize for being a little late. 
Yeah, you're fine. We just started anyway. Also, Draven wants to fight me. Drea wants to fight you? Yeah. In bed? No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> she wants to 1v1 me. In Damn. Game. Wait, I can't log into Roll20. Why? Join a game. No. Take me back to my Final Fantasy Roll20. There we go. Wait, no, not this map either. I didn't. Okay, so after quite the walk and not much conversation because well, Drava is a bit of a nervous wreck having challenged you to a, a fight, uh, you make it to your destination and she, she summons her weapon, though... It isn't the same uh, magic scythe that Angela had bestowed upon her before the party went to go deal with Bazad and Garland. Uh, this time, her staff is about as tall as her, and she's about uh, five, seven and a half feet tall. And on the ends of the staff, the front tip appears to look like a tornado of sorts and the bottom tip is bladed Ooh. oh and after witnessing her draw her new weapon you also happen to notice that some of her clothes have changed and she is wearing entirely she's wearing an entirely different set of accessories and armor from when you last took the time to look at her mm -hmm. and she she draws a rune in the air and snaps her finger and the rune vanishes seemingly nothing happened but after doing that she speaks well nobody can interrupt us so whenever you're ready Okay, I see that my sword, my character is not on. on. <laughs> I see. <laughs> oh, <crazy. laughs> uh, oh, thank you. I see my sword. <laughs> you mean you unsheathe your sword? Apologies Time for interruption, sword. but uh, where am I in all this? I'm just observing. Uh, you you are physically not present for this scene. Gotcha. All right, that's all I needed to know. All right. That battle will a uh, commence. Oh, bitch. Alright. Let's see here. Uh, Mel will be going second. Whew. Oh, bitch. That's right, be going fast. Drava will be taking her first turn. And to kick things off, she is going to hit you with Aeroga, which is Wind 3. Damn, this music, though. I'm gonna crank up the volume. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna counter this bitch real quick. Hold on. Where are you, my beautiful, beautiful slap shot? Can I actually? Can I? You can't counter magic with slap shot. Also, she says, um, as she's casting a spell, she says, please don't hold back for either of our sakes. What? Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, my poor baby. The fuck are those? That was, that was so, a bad girl. So she hits you with that, and you are not... Uh, let's see here. You are not five feet backwards. Oof. So just move backwards one square. Yo, Riku, when you say you 
you're being knocked. I was expecting some Dragon Ball Z thing where she gets hit into this rock and the rod explodes. <laughs> nah, nah. Uh, for her next action, she is going to cast. <clears throat> oh, she's going to cast Libra on you and get a read of your stats. And oh just, oh and no! Just how strong you really are at this moment in time. Oh dear! I would squeal and be like, "You pervert!" <laughs> Ignoring that comment from Mel, she scoffs and Why? Oh, okay, never mind. I thought <laughs> she cast I thought you were ignoring. No 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 no. Uh she cast Pratera <clears throat> excuse me. Pratera and Shellera on herself, increasing her uh regular defense and her magic <laughs> defense by fifty. Sixty four and then for her fifth action she is going to cast temper on herself and that is her turn okay bitch <laughs> I said that out loud I'm using <laughs> temper on you as well okay let me let me uh, I'm gonna punch in her HP and MP and then I'll type out the rest of her stuff <laughs> later it would have been hilarious would be like ooh, ooh let's have a little look see <laughs> Let's have a little look see real quick. Oh my goodness. I feel like I already annoyed her enough. <laughs> Lur reads the on me. I'm like... If I was in your position, I would like annoy her to the point where she gets agitated and like she loses some of her guard. But fucking Psychological I use, warfare. I use charisma. <laughs> Holy shit, I'm, I'm, about, I'm about to do that. I'm doing math, okay, give me a sec. Mm-hmm. So minus, minus that should come out to... Okay. Bop, bop. And... Bop, bop. All right. Let's see... Everyone... Let's see... Alright, there's her health and her MP, and I will type out her current, her current stats. Also, if you want to have banter with her as I type this up, feel free. Because you're already, you're already calling her a bitch. <laughs> oh my god, if Mel had like a, a split personality, that'd be fucking hilarious. <laughs> In combat mode, she becomes extremely aggressive and just starts shooting slayers at people. That's, that's literally what her character is, actually. When I, I'm like actually that? not joking, yeah. Oh my god, you'd be like... You just spit on the ground, you rotten bitch! <laughs> you bitch, man. It's just like, I'm gonna, since we're not technically in combat right now because I'm still reading her, I'm gonna stare at her and go like, so, uh, how do my stats look? Uh, she, she scoffs, and she says, well, you're nothing to sneeze at, that's for sure, but I'm also oh, not gonna, me. I'm not gonna act reckless, given, you know, how strong you are and all that shit. Oh, you want to go careful with me? That's so cute. Does careful mean not holding back to you? What are you, crazy? I mean... Yes. <laughs> Perhaps. We'll find Perhaps. out. We'll find out. I feel like a, a lobster just popped into Mel's head. Perhaps. Perhaps. <laughs> God, Rick, you should, see, you should hear me playing League of Legends. I get uber, like, I get super aggressive and then randomly, like, I'm playing, like, any character with a gun, I go, like, catch my bullet, bitch! 
I had fun playing ARAM yesterday. We need to play more league then. I almost slept in, like, came back from work exhausted. Mm -hmm. uh, I went to go take a shower, and after taking a shower, I, I wake up and I'm all like, oh, fuck, D&D. &D. <laughs> I, I, like, mm -hmm. hop out of my couch and I crack open my laptop and I'm all like, oh, I'm only five minutes late. I got nervous because I thought, like, I missed an hour or something. Nah. All right, Poker, there you go. That 340 though mm -hmm. is, is currently 390 because she buffed herself, and that 400 nice weakness. is 450. Oh, those are her base stats. Potential okay. enemy turned friend, turned comrade. Oh, oh. there's a chance that we could actually make an enemy out of her. Oh huh? yeah, like had you guys not gone about uh, your very first interaction with her, she this this whole scene will be different. Oh, yeah. dude, it could have been a life or death moment. Yeah, like, like, remember when you were in Angela's interrogation room, basically? Mm -hmm. And what I had written in my notes was if anyone had, like, gone out of their way to insult Draper or make her feel bad, and or if they failed their athletics role, she'd be dead right now. Wait, she'll be dead right now, but... But how? But how would that make her a potential enemy unless she gets resurrected as an enemy? No, no, no. That that description for her is a summary of events that happened with her up to this point. Ah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, uh, I misunderstood then. Yeah, it's all good, bro. Okay, let's see here. I like her weakness. I like her weakness. I already know what to do. <laughs> Alright. That's how you're gonna just start taking off your clothes. <laughs> oh lord. <laughs> no. I'm gonna do this in a smart way. I'm gonna do it in a smart way. Okay. Oh, okay. Let's see. And see my sword. Does it still have Blizzard on it or can I cast it? Nope. It is. It has been a week since your last combat encounter. So you need to apply a different element to your... Or you, you need to apply an element to your weapon again. Okay. What's your weakness? Um... Easily Limit break right elemental onslaught. She doesn't have any weakness towards any specific element, does she? Mm, no. Good, but... we're going for fire. Okay. I'm gonna cast fire on my thing. Mm. Right. And I'm gonna use... Since I am quite far away, I will use double slash. And in the process, I will slash towards her once. Use flash freeze. Wait, and then she 130 speed? Yeah, so she, she I will... is 4 speed faster than Mel. Oh. Literally. So I'll use double slash for now. And in the process, this is what's going to look like. I'm going to slash towards her. And because I'm in her distance, I will use Prism Katana. Right? Okay. Why? And because I'm double slashing, I will hit her again and use... Like, am I allowed to do that? No, du double slash hits a single target once. But if you want to use it on multiple people, you can do that. Say less! Okay, I have an idea. Now, before I use double slash, I noticed that Dreva seemed very distracted by my words at the start. So with that, I already noticed that her weakness was easily getting distracted. I'm going to use double slash on myself. <laughs> you what? AKA, wait, wait. I will slash towards her, use Prism Katana, and then graze my skin, aka the clothes that I'm wearing. I will graze it with my sword in order to cut it in half. So you're effectively attacking yourself with prism katana, yes? I'm no, I'm just, right? I'm, I'm, I'm not using it on myself. I'm using it on my clothing. So I slash my shirt open. <laughs> okay. Okay, I understand now. You got it? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna like this. slash towards her prism katana and in the process I'll literally slice her and then slice my shirt in the process. <laughs> and then literally land right behind her so she doesn't even know what I did until she has to turn around. 
Okay, let me... Oh, wait. Uh, you need to roll a 1d4 to see if any of that even hits her. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Imagine it doesn't. Damn. God, if you... Oh, fail. yeah, baby! Oh, oh, wow, okay. <laughs> oh, no. All right, so that... <laughs> yep, that's a crit. Yeah, let me... All right, cool. You... You didn't just cut your shirt open. You turned it into a bikini. I turned it into a bikini. Right. Like, so... Uh, it's literally like Urza using her fucking transfiguration. Yes. Okay, mm. let, me, let me subtract that. Let me subtract the damage you did to, to, from her health. So, okay, you are now behind her, yes? Yes. Okay, so you did the fire on your weapon. No more... You got one action left. I have one action left. Oh shit! Okay. Um, flash freeze. <laughs> oh. oh, damn! Two okay, another Two one. Bam! I guess I guess my my character also enjoys fighting. This is Dreva. She gets that increased luck. Sheesh. Minus. Uh, okay. It is now her turn. And are you like you you're like directly behind it with an arm's reach, yes? Yes. Okay. So actually I'm gonna I'm gonna have her roll perception to see if she even saw you move behind her. Okay, okay. So she she knows she you're behind her, mm -hmm. and in response to that, she is going to cast. Hmm. Hmm. She's going to use concentration. So her next magic attack is going to do plus 5 damage. And then she is going to cast Arrow Barrage. <gasps> oh, excuse me. Uh, she's going to cast it on the ground. So she's effectively hitting both you and her. Oh. And so wait, let me, let me type that out before I lose my place. Okay, now plus five, seven, seven, four, 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 one, and then we'll be. One minus nine times nine. Three. All right, you are taking two hundred and thirty-nine points of damage from that. Owie. Two hundred twenty-five. Uh, two hundred two hundred. No, two hundred and thirty-nine. I need the fucking calculator. <laughs> uh. Your HP should currently be uh, 911. Damn, 911. <laughs> kind of racist speak, is it because I'm Arab? Shut up. <laughs> God. Hew, 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 hew. Uh, so after doing that, she will, she will raise her weapon above her head and... She is going to turn around and try to strike you with the bladed side. <laughs> and this is her distraction roll, and... Mm, okay, so she took notice that your shirt has been cut open. And thus, her melee attack... ...will deal, uh, half damage. Hmm! Hugh Hugh? <laughs> She looks. At, she looks at me. 
<laughs> Wait, no. I look at her and go like, whoopsie. It appears I have cut my shirt. <laughs> <coughs> she... <laughs> she's going... Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. So, as she was preparing to strike you, she, she's, she was in the process of saying, uh, take this seriously, but after you said that uh, the attack stat of her melee strike has been further reduced. <laughs> Easily distracted, I see! Drable's adorable. Yes, yeah, she really is. <laughs> okay, and let's see. Okay, you took uh, 17 damage from that, so do 911 minus 17. Uh, I'll this. Concentrate, all that man, strike. Okay. And with her fourth action, uh, she's gonna shout at you, Why did you do that? What do you. Are you taking this seriously or not? I say I am. It appears that you're not doing so. My clothing choices should not distract you from the fight at hand, Dreva. God. <clears throat> she is going to uh, smack her lips, and uh, this role I'm doing for her is another uh, distraction. No, actually, uh, roll charisma. We'll do it this way, roll charisma, to try and distract her further with that comment. Charisma, charisma. Oh, these are saves. Where, where is Charisma? Oh, there. Oh! <laughs> Jesus! Alright, so she just flat out ignores you. No! <laughs> Damn! Uh, My luck, holy shit! <laughs> so she is going to... Uh, she is going to... Cast. She's going to cast fire on the bladed part of her, of her staff, and she is going to, again, perform a melee attack at you. All right, slap shot. All right, let me roll this out. Okay, roll slap shot. Okay, that's a three. Fifteen percent damage and reflect thirty. Easy, bitch. Okay, how it's gonna look is that she sla she tries to melee me, but then I use my sword to block it, look at her, and smile, and then reflect the damage onto her. <laughs> but still take damage in the process, so like she like, I don't know, she slashes my hand. Yeah, uh, okay, so... 15% of 393 is uh, you're taking 335 points of damage, and she is taking ooh, um, three. Okay, so she's taking 118 from the reflect. This minus yes. six. Don't I reflect thirty percent? Oh wait, never mind. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that was action number four, and for her third action, uh, she is going to take a look at. She's gonna cast Libra again. And look at your health, which you are pretty much half, by the way. Yep. <laughs> and she, her, 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 her eyebrow uh, twitches for a moment as, as she, she personally feels you're not taking this seriously enough. 
And okay, bet. Those are uh, are her actions. Okay. I know. I I noticed that she thinks that I'm not taking the fight seriously. Although I know that she can get distracted easily, I think I'm gonna stop that for a bit. I want to use Dragon Slice three times, right. and then Flash Freeze twice. Okay, roll that 1d4 to hit. Oh yeah, not bad. Uh, oh, yikes. Alright, so that attack, well that action fails. So we got four left. Okay. That is not funny. <laughs> oh, 1d4. Jesus fucking Christ! Alright, now you hit her. God! And because, okay. and because you rolled the four, uh, one, one of the attacks you decide to roll for this action, I mean for your next three actions, will, one of them will be a crit. You can pick, pick which one it'll be. Definitely flash freeze. Jesus Christ. Oh, so I'm only, I only have two actions left, right? No, three. Yeah, because you, you screwed up your first two, so you got three left. Okay, so I'll use Dragon Slice twice, so that's one, and then I increase my attack by ten. Three, four. Um, dragon slice again. Four, five. And then flash freeze will be my crits. Alright. With the fire effect as well. Damn, it's like a flash freeze. She'll die. <laughs> five, two, nine. Oh, also in the process of this, I once I noticed her eyebrows like raise, I um, my facial expression completely changes in that one instant that she notices. So I I look at her completely seriously, like I've lost all sense of like mercy or remorse towards anything I do. And if she sees a bit closely, she can see that one of my eyes starts to glow. I made that one of my characteristics. Is that? When I'm uber duper serious, my eyes just start glowing red. Ooh. Okay. Uh. If you want, you can roll intimidation with that, as I subtract. Uh, I am not having my favorite moments today, Riku. There are too many fails. <laughs> hey, look, I don't control the dice. I know it's so sad. <laughs> you sure about that? I, How many times did I get crit? He's a dungeon I mean, master. Crit. He could rig the game. That's could, so true. I could, but I'm not that kind. Of, <coughs> well, I'm not that kind of DM. Yeah, I know. I don't want her to get scared by what I'm doing. I want her to recognize that I'm serious, so I don't mind failing. Okay. Uh, if, if you want, if you want her to recognize that you're being serious now, roll persuasion instead. And before it's also a failed. Thank fucking god it's a number. Okay. <laughs> uh, she catches the hint. And... Uh, in response to her recognizing that you're taking her seriously now. Uh, she is going to cast Cure on you. Oh. Uh, let's see. 25 and nice of people blah, 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 five plus do do about two all right you are fully healed because of how cure works and how what her maximum MP is hey actually I'm gonna uh, uh, hang on 50 go back over yonder I'm just gonna throw this above your head for my sake. So whenever I click on you, I don't have to go into your sheet. Also your MP2. Alright, cool. Uh, so she's fully healed you, and then the effects of uh, her protect, and her patera and her shellura wear off. So her defense is are back to normal and for her second and her third action she is going to cast Faithra on herself increasing her magic attack by 70 
So her magic attack is now 410. Or well, her attack in general is 410. Because she only uses magic for the most part. And then uh, Temper causes her next attack. Or her next set of attacks until the end of her turn hit twice. So she is going to. Hmm. She is going to cast Ruin. It's a non elemental magic attack. Let's see. 44 plus 8. And she's gonna cast that again. So, oh, we. Two. One, two, three, four. Nice. <laughs> wow, I didn't even notice that. That's, that's pretty sick. <laughs> that. Uh, let's see here. Six, one, six, three, six, one. Okay, uh, you are taking 63 damage from that. Uh, access 3 and 4. And then for her. For her last action. Mm, she is going to cast. Uh, she's going to use Mana Charge. And so, let's see what this comes out to be. Alright, so when her next turn comes around, she's gonna regain 49% of her max MP. Damn. And because she is in mana charge, she is considered defending, so all of your attacks will do 20% less damage. Okay, and in the process, all of her shit will also do less damage. Where are you, my queen? I'm gonna use... Mithril Badge. Okay. All times so um, other than you can use that damn thing. <laughs> I saw it at the start, but because she started using melee again, I was like, oh, okay. Okay, so um, all magic would... damage that comes your way is lowered by 5% for... 1d3 turns. Two turns. Two turns, not bad. Um, Let me check, let me check. I'm not gonna summon Ifrit. No. Oh. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I'm looking at my spells and shit, and I'm like, hmm. Mm -hmm. What does God touch? Oh, my oh, that's a trait you got from. I can blackmail bitches. I forgot that I'm also a sleuth. <laughs> that would be. F oh my god, I can't wait to blackmail people. <laughs> um, alright, okay. Yeah, I'm feeling so about this. Don't worry about it. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, wait. Yep. Good enough. Alright, so your turn um, will hit her. Okay, so since I can. I'm gonna use Dragon Slice twice. Oh, All fuck, right. ignore the last second one. Um, three, five, six. Okay, and then I'm gonna use it again. There we go. Six, seven. And no! And I will use. I Can I cast two elements on the same thing? Nope. Whatever okay. whatever element you decide to cast after the first one, it will be overwritten. Alright. Okay, I'm gonna use lightning. Oh. Actually, you know, but then I but wouldn't I lose a move if I use lightning? Fire. I use I lose fire, but will I lose um like a turn? Uh yeah, that does take up an action. I'll keep- I'll stay with fire. I feel like fire is very fitting for this red-themed battle. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, okay. She will 10% less damage at everything that I do, so it means I can't really negate that. 20. 20. I'm gonna use Rapid Slash so I can be faster than her for once, so I don't need to, like... <laughs> Just so you don't have to roll do anymore? Anything. Yeah, I don't want to do it anymore, man. <laughs> okay. So your and, speed um... is currently 136. Yep, and then I'm just gonna use... Mm, flash Freeze, twice. So, 
This is starting to piss me off. <laughs> Do I have blinking cut types here? Do the one dragon slash updates? <laughs> it's over for you, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that dealt 596 damage. Let's button go! Okay. So, uh, now that her next turn has come around, uh, mana charge will end. And 49% of. 2750 is 1348 rounding up so she's pretty much regained all of her MP good no actually she, she has regained all of her MP oh <gasps> excuse me uh so now excuse me she will cast She's going to cast Arrow Barrage twice. However, she's casting it at the ground again because you're still in melee range, so she's hitting both you and herself. Now I'm gonna smack her for that. <laughs> I look at her, Drava, stop hitting yourself! <laughs> And then she is going to cast. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. She is going to cast Aroga again and move you. Wait, she has to roll to hit you first. Ah, uh -huh, whore. <laughs> Sixteen. All right, that fails. That hits. Alright. Yeah. Gold <laughs> hair. Aroga now. Mm -hmm. Okay. She's. Uh, move yourself one square up. So you move my what? Mo move your uh, token one square up. Okay. Right, so you're still in melee range, but you're adjacent to her now. Mm -hmm. And I will add up all the things. So let me do that and then time. Yes. Okay, so from the first arrow barrage, you take 216 points of damage. 116? Yep. Okay. And then from the second one, you take 239. And then from getting hit by Aroga, you take. 219. Motherfucker. <laughs> because she also hit herself with both of those spells. Uh, with no chance to fucking dodge. Uh, she takes 879 points of damage. So minus. She's at 922 HP left. And for her, for her last action, she is going to, she's going to 
backflip away from you and make some distance between you and herself. Hmm, why? And, uh, she, she doesn't say anything, but she gives you an incredibly confident smirk, and she begins charging a spell that is very, uh, visually evident, as you see a magic circle, uh, appear under her feet. And you can see uh, literal words and such begin to form around her. Um, this is small like, fairy tale words. Like like runes type words and shit. I'm gonna use a mega potion. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Jesus Christ, bitch. Um, I don't know how much a mega potion gives to me. Uh, that is uh, 350 HP. Riku, I have a question. And I may have a potential answer. I hate the way you responded. But yeah, is it a <laughs> one potion per action? Yes. Gotcha. Start chugging. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of scared about this one, I'll be real. <laughs> I'm going to take another one. <laughs> All right, so you have healed yourself for 700 HP. Reactions Putting those potions I gave you to get to use. Okay, I am gonna use Riku. Yes. Can I use one of my elements in Prism Beam, as in en enchant with my last four moves? No, three moves. I will enchant two elements inside Prism Beam. Uh... To increase its damage. Can I do that? I hadn't intended for the spell to be used like that, but since you asked, sure. However, however, it's going to cost double the MP, so it's going to cost you 100 MP to do this. Yeah, I got a lot of MP. I'm good. Okay. <laughs> Because I don't even use MP much. I will cast both Lightning and Blizzard and use Prism Beam. Okay. Okay, let me roll that 1d6 to see what elements resist goes down. Oh! Oh, well, Lightning resist went down. So, for... Hold on. I keep typing it. Okay, so for two turns, she's gonna take an extra 50 damage from lightning magic. And let me do the math to subtract for, her HP. For visual purposes, I want Mel to be floating. Uh, you, because I need you to be casting the float spell me. for that one. Never mind. And you don't have the float spell. Oh, I wanna, I wanna fucking roll intimidation on this bitch because she tried to intimidate me. She is smug ass bitch. Okay. Fuck you! <laughs> okay, so how do you want to do that? What, what are you doing with this intimidation role? Okay. You see, the thing is, because she looked at me and smirked and tried to use the spell, I'm genuinely going to have zero reaction to it. Instead, I'm going to smile like a... <laughs> almost like a crazy bitch but a tiny bit less serious and just extend both of my hands outwards and then press like not okay i extend both of my hands outwards and then towards my chest but my hands are facing outwards still and then i just start casting prism beam towards her and then she sees this like big ass fucking hybrid of blizzards and lightning and the prism itself just like form mm -hmm. And then she just goes like, ah, fuck. Hmm. And now instead of one eye going red, both of them are, are slightly, slightly red. Okay. Leaving that full, full on 
burning eyes red to like okay as a, as a result of that uh, she notices your expression <clears throat> and she visibly flinches during the charging uh, the magic circle that is under her feet vanishes and the power of the of whatever she is charging goes down by one stage Ooh. Okay, uh, how many actions do you have left? When? We got two actions left. I still do? Yeah, you, you drank the two potions. No, wait. Yeah, I drank two potions and then I casted two spells on Prism Beam. Right, okay, so you have one action left. Yes. Do I not have zero? No, you drank the two potions. That was two actions. You did... Uh, you combined two spells in the prison beam. That was another two actions. You did the intimidation roll as you were doing prison beam. Oh, okay, okay. So I can cast another prison beam. Yeah, if Wait, you want no, to. no, no. Or I can just cast fire as well. <laughs> Might as well blast her at this point oh, with yeah, the you, power of you elements. You do know basic ass fire. Is that... I will use fire. Is that? Ah, oh, it's not on your um, your attack list though. Uh, oh dear. Okay. Uh, what's what's your magic attack? Isn't it like 102 or something? Uh. Yeah, 102. Okay. Uh, type 1d8 plus. No, we'll do r slash 1d8 plus 102. Uh, wow, you almost rolled the maximum damage you could have done with that. Shit. <laughs> right. It's getting stronger. <laughs> Eight. Alright, those are your actions. Are you going to use your ending action to defend or... Undefend. Okay. So. Damn, I really am versus Carla in this bitch. You. So after you take a defensive position, uh, Andreva is going to release the spell that she has been charging, and she is using her limit break. Fuck me. <laughs> And, it's a good thing I defended. And because she knows six different magic attacks, there's going to be six D eight plus her magic attack stat. Which is still currently four ten. <gasps> um, excuse me. And because you have under 10% AC, this is going to ignore your AC. Alright, so 454 minus 179 is 275. And just for visual effect, uh, as she, when she did that, uh, you notice, you notice an explosion of, that is not an explosion, that is a beam. You notice an explosion of ice, an explosion of fire, an explosion of holy, an explosion of... Uh, let's just use this for wind, a water effect, and then just a non-elemental magic explosion. And after she does that, the, the room and the uh, glow around her is going to vanish and she's also going to briefly look as if she is out of breath but she quickly regains her exposure mm. and because she took the time to regain her composure she basically spent her entire turn doing her limit break 
I don't care. You look a little tired there, Draver. You sure you can keep up? Shut up. I'm fine. What about you, Miss uh, I'm Nearly Dead? I'm perfectly fine. Nearly Dead, please. How much damage did that do? 454, right? 275. 275. Nearly dead, my ass! That's what I scream. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, Draver! <laughs> Catch my fucking sword! <laughs> <laughs> I'm double slashing towards her. I'm going, I'm going for long damage. Fuck yep, prison you have to beam! You in melee range, but because your falcon armor and that the distance is greater than 15 feet, uh, it's a free action. Double slash, and I'm here now. Alright. Oh. I will use a nice mix of things to confuse the living shit out of her. Prism katana. F katana flash. <laughs> okay. So while I do but the math, action wise, yes. how do you want to. How, how are you describing this? How, how is this taking place? So, because I couldn't reach her using double slash at the start, because. I think my distance wasn't as... Yeah, it's a range of 15 feet, not for not 20 feet. I dashed forward 15 feet and then dashed 5 towards her again to make sure that I'm in range of her. <laughs> so basically, I kind of looked like I was a zigzag, slashing in one place and then another place. But it, instead of it, me walking in that direction, I basically, like... I basically went invisible, popped up in a location, then went invisible again, popped up behind her, and then started using like the f like the four slashes of attacks. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. Uh, the only reason I stopped responding was because you have KO'd her. Oh, oh fuck, she oh. died. No, 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 well, no. I killed no, her! No, 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 <laughs> stop, stop, stop. Not KO in the sense of Oh, she's unconscious. KO in the sense of she is, she cannot continue the fight any longer. Cause she had, uh, before all that, <clears throat> she had uh, 616 health left, and you did 737. Oof. All right. Okay, I have to fix all of my things. So this battle is finished, and oh my I will. God. Play, I will play the... Well, I, I have a, a different victory song for what I call uh, significant events, which is what you just did. Okay. Gang shit. So, uh, as a result of this fight, uh, you, Mel, uh, you, you gain an achievement. So let me type on what the achievement does first. Achievement. Awesome! You get a trophy. That's my achievement wrong. Complete. Complete this. Gain following. Wow, this is tasty. <laughs> that was an hour fight, damn. Yeah, and that's why I said your thing, we're gonna do yours first, because it's gonna be a while. Mm. I like the victory song. Yep, it's from Digimon Cyber Sleuth. Oh! Digimon. Riku, you're gonna hate me for this. I have both of them, but never play them. Hey, it's all good. I have, uh... I have the second Digimon Cyber Sleuth game, and I haven't finished it yet. Isn't that a prequel to the first one, though? Uh, apparently it happens in between the events of the first one, according to what Alec told me. Oh, okay. Okay, uh, that is, that is the achievement for completing your very first significant battle. Oh my god, 50 attack. And... Ooh. As for what you gain for finishing the fight itself, type that mm -hmm. out.
Magic attack as well, damn bitch. Poker, since you since you uh, KO'd her, you should uh, give her the lap pillow treatment. <laughs> I sit on her. <laughs> oh my god, magic. No, no, don't sit on her. Just give her the lap pillow. I, I sit, I sit, I sit by her and just like cross my, I, I, I fold my legs and then put her head on my lap and I go like, there, there. <laughs> and just pat her head. Just pat her head and go like, pat, pat. <laughs> She'll be fine. She'll be fine. Okay. So you leveled up from um, level two. Well, eleven oh, fuck, to twelve. Which means I can use two dexterity. I will use strength. Actually, I have a lot of dexterity. Six, seven, eight. Um. What else do I need to do from the friendship ranks? Not, not that one. Mithril equipment recipe, not that one. Aha! There we go, passive gain from Texy Tex. Gain one speed. Mm. Gain plus one attack. Two defense. One intelligence. Intelligence. Uh, okay. Oh, one wisdom. Where is wisdom? Wisdom. Okay. And let me know you're done with that so I can continue the scene. Wait. Sorry. Yeah, okay. Nope, another intelligence. What the fuck? No, no, no. Never mind. That's not part of it. That's not part of it. Okay. Let me just examine real quick. Uh, so you've gained two speeds. Your, sp your normal speed is now 131. Uh, you've gained wisdom and one... No, two intelligence, right? Yeah. So you now have 820 max MP. Everything else checks out. All right, cool. Okay, so continuing on with the scene. As you sit and just take in the surroundings of nature and think about everything that's happened so far uh drava she begins to stir and when she wakes up she makes eye contact with you and she a, a, as she's in the process of waking up she smiles at you and i need you to roll a charisma save my heart Oh, am, I, am I saving myself? Am I saving myself? No. <laughs> uh, so, when you make eye contact with her, you manage to fight off the urge to squeal, blush, and uh. I'm saving myself, start, bro. <laughs> yeah, start start frantically hugging her like a puppy or something. And as the gears start to turn on her head, she. She initially starts frantically getting up, but then she stops herself and just chills out for a bit. And she speaks and she says, well, that was, that was fun, actually. Uh, I'm, I hate that I had to push you to take me seriously, but it was, it was still fun. Uh, anyway, so, the reason I asked you to come out here with me, and I asked you to 
fight me was because and no ill will towards the rest of your group but I don't really know them that well and since I'm going to be joining you all I figured I would um well I would personally gauge your strength myself as well to be blunt the person I am the uh, closest mm. here with and uh, I also after having fought you one on one with our current strength as much as it pains me to say it's like pulling out teeth I I noticed that you guys don't really have a a magic person on your team but I don't want to be just magic you know I I want to be more than just that I want I want to be useful and I want to do my best to cover what you guys don't have so and she she stands up to her feet as she says this part if you'd be willing to teach me how you fight I would greatly appreciate it if if you're I, okay with that anyway I stand up as well and I bow towards her I, I bow at her it would be my honor really Yes, of course it would be. Are you kidding me, Draper? <laughs> it would be so fucking fun. And in the process, you'll be able to join us. Like, isn't that fucking fantastic? And I'm pretty sure my group will love you like crazy. Yasha was my G. And Ice is a fucking crackhead. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm pretty sure you can learn a lot from both of us to be completely real. <laughs> okay. Yasha just sneezes because someone's talking about him. Ugh. Fuck. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, she she tries to stifle a laugh after you say that, and she she picks up her weapon, and she says, uh, "Well, uh, when 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 do we when do we start? Even though we'll have to be uh, heading out soon." Wait, 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 uh... I... Damn it! She takes a deep breath. This is more of a personal thing for me. But... I... And, 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 and before you say, I don't have to. I want to apologize for the way I have been treating you and your group and for the first time in a long time I want to make a genuine effort towards being friends with you and she extends her hand and she says aloud I'm Drava, traveling musician, and very recently become an adventurer again. How's it going? God, I would hug her right there. <laughs> you read my mind. I mean, if instead you of shaking to. her hand, I would hug her right there. And since I, I, I smack her hand away and just go for a massive bear hug. Okay, uh, she, uh, when you first grab her, she, naturally, as part of her nature, uh, starts exclaiming, hey, hey put me down, I, look, I get you're happy, no. but, what do you mean, no, huh? Accept it! I, I, okay, fine, fine. And she returns the hug. And now, 
now that this, uh, <laughs> this very, very long arc slash hidden quest is over, uh, the party has now gained a permanent party member. Hey. So from this moment, job, from this moment going forward, Draven is officially part of the group, <clears throat> and I will, uh, at, well, going off off the cuff for a second. And I'm leaving this in the recording just because uh, I was really hoping that you guys would like actually do this. Cause like, Listen, wait, which part? No, like like the whole thing, like go out of your way to interact with her and you know treat her like a person and keep her alive and all this shit because like riku are you fucking kidding me bro <laughs> yashua is like sora but mature and smarter <laughs> i i also have in my notes um I, I had like a whole um progression system to like who 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 she was gonna bond with the most who depending on who interact with her and this whole scene right here was uh, different depending on who met those requirements. So like, so like if if Yuki's character Ice decided to, you know, go through the whole thing, then she would be both an elementalist and a wild rose. If uh, if Yashua went and did it, she would have been an elementalist and a faith walker. Uh, oh, since, that's so cool, since, dude! Since Poker did it, she's an elementalist and a samurai. And if Alec had did it, she'd been an elementalist and the Noctis class. Dude, that's awesome. Well, I'm a fucking elementalist Holy as well! No, 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 no Poker. That, you went that far and beyond. Poker, you are still just a baseline samurai, but she uh -huh. is both an elementalist and a samurai. So she's getting, yeah. Holy shit. So she's getting benefits and abilities from uh both skill trees or classes rather. Damn, you could almost classify her as a spell sword at this point. Yeah. Holy well, shit, that's so insane. Depending on depending we made on her how open. depending on how and what uh Mel wants to teach her, she very well can be. Okay, say less. I'm gonna teach you everything I know. Alright, so, so she, she doesn't gain any skills aside from the base attacks uh, for being a samurai. But when she hits level 15, she will start learning abilities. However, uh, she will. She does not have access to third eye, blinking cut, or slap shot unless you teach that to her. And I will copy paste the rules for teaching things later okay so with that out of the way also after session i will make up her character sheet and i will allow all of you to see it so you can see what she's capable of now and what she will be capable of later on hmm. so with all that out of the way uh how, how do you want to return back to the village? Do you want to fly? Do you want to walk? Or do you just want to want to vibe? Because either way, once the scene ends, the two of you will be back at the village. I want to vibe a bit before we go back. All right, cool. <laughs> so, are, I'm assuming you're still bear hug spinning her. Yes, no? I, I just put her down. All right, so you just put her down. And yes, she she does a little huff and puff, and she fixes her hair as it got, <laughs> as it got a little messy while you were spinning her. I I assist her in the process. I'm like, oh, my bad. <laughs> okay. Uh, also, uh, I guess I should tell you a little more about myself. But you first. What what don't I already know about you. Like, tell me uh, if 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 you're comfortable with it. Uh, of course. Um, tell me what your world was like and your your what's your story is what I'm trying to say. 
man, I'm really bad at the social interaction thing. Jesus Christ. <laughs> you, you, you hear her mutter that last part. And I'm like, I, I tell her, I'm just like, I mean, I don't think you're that bad. <laughs> also, uh, from, from the world that you all came from, the concept of religion and uh, Jesus Christ does not exist. Because we come from a technological advanced world. Well, no, you come from an entirely different dimension. Well, yeah. my world. Wait, hold on. Does that mean Drava comes from Earth Earth? Yes. Bro! Drava comes from Earth! Bro! You know, I know so much about Earth, oh my god, it's crazy. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> My world, bitch. I don't know. I don't fucking know anything about my world. <laughs> um. She says, "J." Like, when she said Jesus Christ, it made me raise an eyebrow. I'm all like, "Wait." wait. <laughs> uh, uh, in case she raised an eyebrow, she goes like, mm, Jesus. "In case you need a, a refresher about where you all came from, uh, being Fenia, uh, you like the the party." In, in general, when, I, when I'm talking about this part in specifics, uh, you all were working at a game company, you all lived in Upper Atlantis, which was essentially uh, the pretty side where all the entertainment, all the business and all that stuff happened. Um, it's up to your specific backstories, if you had a family or not, if you were going solo, but essentially, be before everything went to shit, right? Uh, he grew up, went to college, got employed, we're vibing. You didn't really know your co-worker slash party until all this shit happened. And then everything that happened up to this point. <clears throat> but as Rick stated earlier, yeah, it was incredibly technologically advanced. Like, it had gotten to the point where it was possible to That fits to my just, backstory. To, uh, wait, hold on. Before you say that, uh, it was so technologically advanced to the point where uh, mankind had been able to like physically create energy and and imbue life into said energy. So there were like androids and walking humanoid energies going around the place, and they were treated like regular people. Reference mm. PSO2. She's never played PSO2. Oh Sadly. shit. Uh, Star Wars, I guess. Mm, good enough. <laughs> oh. Well, oh hell, think about um, three. think about uh, Edelshire and Azaz Law from oh, fourteen. Uh. Okay. Damn, a lot of tech. Yeah. So we have fucking mechas everywhere. <laughs> Essentially. Like, they're, um, they're their own race. I, I, okay, so I'll, I'll tell you a bit about my life. I'll be like, well, um, at least in the early childhood of my life, I never really focused on anything that was, that related to the world. You know, I was, um, I was in a rough patch in the first in the first few years of my life, it never really started until I started working in that game shop and until I came here, I basically didn't have anything over there. It was, but from what I know, at least, we had a lot of technology, like a lot. Like, the amount of aether that we used as well inside it, that was... I trailed off a bit because, in my backstory at least, I know how Aether affected me and my family, so I don't necessarily enjoy speaking about it. Okay. Um... Either or. I, I trail off for a bit and I go like, um, anyway... Now that I think about it, I don't know much of where I came from. I never really wanted to know anything about that place. I kind of just... left it there to... I never wanted to bask in that place. I never really enjoyed it or wanted to know what it was like because of how they treated me. So my life never really started until I got here. Maybe that's why I value a lot 
of my friends and you guys more than I did from more than I did in the world that I came from, at least. Huh. All right. Sounds good. I can't really question you on where you came from, you know. Anyway, uh, I'm. It's 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 been a few hours, and I've gotten hungry again. Uh, let's say we head on back and chill out, I guess. Okay, it's a date. Let's go. Uh, I wait. I, 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 it's I, a date. I, I, wait, no, I. Uh, I grab her arm and walk. Uh, oh god. Towards the bridge. Fine. Shaking She's going to learn a lot of patience. <laughs> Alright, and we shift scenes back to the tavern. Uh, <laughs> and Dreva and Mel enter. Right. About three or so hours have gone by. Uh, when, when the two enter, or rather when the scene comes into full view... Uh, you can see Adam and Ifrit chilling over on a couch. You can see Angela going over a lot of papers and counting the money that she's made over the last few weeks just to keep up to date on the funds. You can see Mayor uh, combing through a lot of important looking documents. And you can see the girls... <clears throat> Off in a corner, uh, practicing their next routine. And when the when the ladies Mel and Dreva uh, re-enter the tavern, uh, Angela she says aloud, "Ah, yes, I need to speak to you all. You guys, you all being the party. Uh, when you have the chance. Uh, but." Please, whatever you want to do here, go on and get out of the way. But when it's done, uh, come talk to me. Hmm. So, if anybody wants to do a little something something, feel free. Interact with whoever. Talk about whatever. Okay. Oh, Before... Before our last session ended, after the little sparring we had with the with the girls, mm -hmm. I wanted Yasha to just you know leave the tavern to take you know to take a walk and to and you know to have like just to think of what happened and what could possibly happen in the future because he was like kind of taken aback from that conflict or not conflict that spar. Okay, so. Okay, where where are you walking at? Like, what what section of the village are you in? I want, I I wanted him to walk at the beginner where, at, at the beginner forest where we where oh, we first came. Gotcha. Came in. Gotcha. Okay. <clears throat> so you say to Angela, you're gonna go take a walk, and you make your way all the way back to where you and everyone else began their journey. Oh, hold on. That. I got my plate on where my mouse is. Oh, uh, that's cool. Cut that off, and I'll play this track. And while, while you are here pondering about everything that's gone on so far uh you can see you can see a figure of a person in the distance but you can't really tell who or what it is hmm. who or what uh if you would like uh let me check something really quick yeah. I opened the wrong thing again. Uh, <clears throat> do... 
I might as well practice some voice acting while I do this. BRB, I'm gonna go get my food from downstairs. Okay. Copy. So you have a passive perception of 22. Hmm. Okay. So if you want to identify who it is, you can just say you look out towards the person. I'm not gonna make you roll for that. Yashua looks out towards the person. Alright. <clears throat> you look towards him and you see uh, Barkeep gathering some uh, herbs and vegetables from a little pocket in the forest he made for himself. Hmm. What was his name? His name is literally Barkeep. Oh, Barkeep? Yep. Huh. I casually, uh, you know, call out his name he, as a greeting. He rises from his crouching position, he uh, dusts his hands off, and he responds. <clears throat> oh, hey. What's up? Just going out for a walk. Just, uh, thinking about the stuff that transpired. Oh, uh, yeah? It's, uh... It's not taking a toll on you, is it? Hmm. No. Just... I'm beginning to realize is this is... much more than I anticipated. Ah. <sighs> Kid, if I had, if I had a single gill, every time I've heard that in my life so far, uh, I'd have a little over half of what I do now. <laughs> yeah, you probably heard that a lot by now. Yep, comes with the territory of, uh, you know, running a bar and... Having people come and go, helping out at Angie's place. Yeah, you hear a lot of shit like that. Hmm. So, lay it on me. What's, what's your script for realizing that things are a lot bigger than what they were? Well, for starters, Magic. None of that exists where I'm where I come from. We are able to create our own sources of energy, our own sources of power, just with our knowledge and technology that we possess. Not not by the power by that's around us. It's strange. Mm hmm. I take it, remembering from what you said to me earlier, you all technologically advanced, right? Like you had, what you call them? What the hell? Androids and walking pillars of energy where you, where you were from? Yes. We, we were, we were technologically advanced to the point where we could travel to other stars, colonize other worlds, save other worlds, repair other worlds, create or destroy. But we were a peaceful civilization. Hmm. I see, I see. Well, now I understand a little better how I guess to put it in my understanding how much of a culture shock this is for you because I'm, I'm pretty sure that you know and however long your expected lifespan is where you came from I don't think you ever factored visiting other dimensions into the equation 
<laughs> at the time, well, at the time when I was still in active duty, traveling to other dimensions was just a theory. A theory slowly becoming a possibility. As far as I know, we were researching how to travel to other dimensions without erupting the dimension, without destroying the dimension. If if we could never come up with a, a conclusion of how to travel to said dimensions, then we were going to drop the project completely because we don't want to destroy other dimensions. We don't want to take life for no reason. Well, I don't think anyone aside from that rotten devourer wants to destroy dimensions and all that shit. Regardless, it's interesting because you're now the... Uh, he scratches his head for a second. You are now the 800... And 76th military person I've met in my life so far. And and I, I don't I don't mean to be rude, but whatever your experiences that you've dealt with when you served, I'm I'm gonna be honest with you, kid. That's baby shit compared to what what's in store for you in the future given what you've already dealt with so far and you know watching your world and your dimension be destroyed the way it was baby shit <laughs> yeah maybe again I don't mean to be rude with it, but one of my policies, especially for one of my customers, is always be upfront and honest with them. <laughs> nah, honesty's the best policy. I understand that. Just, I thought that fighting a. Uh... Didn't think, uh. A what was that term used? Hmm, I can't I can't seem to remember the term we used to describe such dangerous creatures, but as far as I know, this dragon, this celestial body that could just destroy or devour dimensions. How does something like that even exist? Who or what created it? Or was he just here from the very beginning? I'm... I'm no historian, but... Of the... Few things I've read and... Conversations I've overheard... Uh, the bastard was created by someone I don't know. By what? I don't know. But wherever it came from, and whoever whoever the sick bastard was that decided to make it, they got some issues. And if they are capable of making something like that, then the culprit must be one crazy son of a bitch. And Agreed. If you all make it to that point, which I have full faith that you will, you best pre start preparing yourself now for the fight of. And as much as this term is overused, as he uh, opens a bottle of water, you all better be ready for the fight of your lives. <laughs> I heard that line many times before, and as always, I will always will be. That's good to hear. Hmm. 
Mm. It's good to hear indeed. I've seen too many young guys like you decide to just quit before the journey even started. Whether that be with adventuring or business, the career, or hell. Even in relationships. I'm going to close my window in a bit. <clears throat> even in relationships, I've seen people decide to kick the bucket before they even got anywhere. So good on you for having stones, I guess. Stones. Yashua looks around the forest. This place is really breathtaking. The trees are very different here, too. Yeah, this, uh... This place is really, really good for growing things like... Vegetables and... Other... Plant-based things, fruit and what have you. It's also, as you said... Breathtaking and a very nice place to just sit down and take in nature. And as he as he mentions the part where it's good for growing things, he steps to the side and reveals his small garden of fruits and vegetables and whatnot. Oh, did you make this yourself? Uh, yeah. I... You've met Greg, right? Yeah. Yeah, he... He stopped by the barn one day and gave me a couple of seeds. And he mentioned that I should plant them and grow them here. And that I'd have some really, really good harvests. And, well, he... <laughs> he sure as I wasn't wrong. Oh, what a nice guy. Yeah, he's a... He can be a little wacky and batshit insane sometimes, but he's all right. Uh, is it okay if I scan them? Sure. As Yashua pulls out his pulls out like a transparent tablet, and then it. You see, like, a holographic projection. It just scans everything in an instant. Hmm. The chemicals of these vegetables have are... unique. There is an energy signature coming from them that it's... don't... it's unknown. Perhaps it has perhaps it has something to do with magic. That's more than likely the magic in the soil. <laughs> and uh, believe it or not, I've actually seen something similar to that before in a different city. What? This? Yeah. Huh. Well, well, this this device is a little outdated since the newer ones, uh, the newer ones, you could have them integrated into your wrist. But I'm not a big fan of uh, cybernetics. Mm. Well, if that functions anything similar to the ones I've seen, uh, you'll come across an upgrade, or hell, even a completely different version soon enough. One without having to do the whole... What'd you call it? Cybernetics? Uh, yeah. It's, uh... Augmentation when they implant, uh... Mechanical bits into your body. Hmm. Interesting. It sounds painful. It sounds uncomfortable, but where I'm from, it's just something very casual. You don't even feel it since there's just small injections. Ah. Well, you learn something new every day.
Oh, well, then. Riku, have a question. Bring it. I may have a potential answer. Oh, shoot. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> I'll shoot uh, you. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't Ice bury the body around this area? Uh, no, he burned it. Ah, uh, he burned it. But, like, he left uh, a stone tablet. Yes. Yeah, because I was hoping for jo Josh, Joshua, when he was uh, wandering around the forest, to bump into it or come across it. Mm. And just not not really mention it, but keep it to himself and just nod in respect. I mean, you still can. Hmm. I'm not. I'm not gonna make you roll for something like that. <clears throat> All right. Well, barkeep. Thanks for the talk. I'm gonna keep uh exploring the forest for a little while longer. All right, kid. It's about time for me to get to open up the bar anyway. <laughs> <sighs> right. Take care. Yep. You too, barkeep picks up his bags, slings them over his shoulder, and he makes his exit. What a nice guy. I wish I talked to him sooner, though. Now, Yashua proceeds to continue his walk. Alright. Well Behind this tree. Behind the tree, you said? Alright, so you step by that tree and you immediately noticed Priya's gravestone. What's this? Yashua, like, cleans some of the leaves off the gravestone. Huh. So this is what Ice did. Yasuo just scratches his head in regret. Uh... He's a bigger softy than I imagined. <laughs> Alright. Yasuo... Takes the time to pick some flowers around and just makes a little flower crown and leaves it on top of the gravestone. Alright. After doing that, you feel you feel a a wave of emotion come over you. Nothing sad or negative or anything like that but mm. once the wave passes by you feel you feel a little bit different in a in a good way and i'm going to have you increase your <clears throat> increase your constitution and increase your constitution by one and increase your crit by one. Okay. And my crit. Okay, done. All right. So with this scene coming to an end, will transition us back to the tavern and assuming no one has any interactions they want to do with other characters I will progress will progress the story uh, if you have interactions you want to do you can do them mm -hmm. oh. so I arrive and Mill and Dreva already sitting on the table. 
Uh, yeah, they, they've been there since you left. Oh, okay. Yashua, we've been waiting for you. Come, huh? let's order our food. Oh. <laughs> huh? You okay. two are getting along nicely. I have oh. no idea what you're talking about. I have fully <laughs> idea. I have full idea of what you're talking about. <laughs> it Come appears on. that Dreva has finally concluded that she wants to join our group. It's oh, official. really? Yes. That's great. You seem a bit shaken up, Joshua. Are you okay? No, I'm fine. Just, uh... I was just uh, lost in thought for a little while when I was walking, mm. enjoying the scenery. Oh yeah, where'd um, where'd you go? To the forest. I wanted to check out the trees since they're trees I have never seen before. Since trees like that don't exist where I'm from. Yeah, uh, Mel told me a, a little bit about where you guys come from, and it is wildly different from where I come from. Well, huh? the more you know, I guess. <laughs> As she takes a sip of her, uh, her cranberry juice that is in a teacup Mary's for whatever good. reason. Dude, I used to do so that. Elegant. <laughs> so elegant, so classy. <laughs> we still. Well, well, if you're ever interested about the world we're from, I could always give you a rundown. Please do. I actually don't have any idea about our world. I tried to give her a tiny bit of detail, but it was all a blur. Oh, oh that's right. I remember somebody mentioning in the company that you were from the sticks. Mm hmm. Born and raised. Well, uh, I'm, I'm sure I'll learn enough, uh, and then some as I travel with you all. Is she, she, she nervously fidgets in excitement. That's what I was trying to say. She nervously fidgets in excitement after she finishes her sentence. After her and starts smiling. Yashua chuckles a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're gonna have a lot of time together. Alright. Hey. Where are the others? The... Oh, you mean... Uh, the guy who likes to throw himself at everything and then the other one who throws his weapons all the time? Yeah, where did Ice and Cyril go? Uh, uh, when I... When I left the inn this morning, uh, I heard that they were still... They're still sleeping. Do they normally sleep for t more than 12 hours at a time? <laughs> Unfortunately, I can't give you a straight answer since, uh... I don't know them as much as, as I know your new friend here. Oh, well, I'm sure they'll come to at some point or whatever. Well, well, af well after that hit that ice took, he needs all the rest he could take. Oh, yeah, he, uh... Yeah. I haven't seen anything like that before. Does... Is it... common for him to be as reckless as he is? Granted, That's I know hard. you just said you don't really know him that well as you do Mel, but the question bears asking anyway. <laughs> I honestly... I wish I could answer your question, but as far as I've seen so far, yeah, I, I think I think he likes jumping headfirst into problems. Or not just problems, but anything that catches his interest. 
Uh, well, I guess that makes sense. Anyway, didn't... Didn't Angela say she wanted to talk to us at some point? Oh yeah, yeah. she did. Angela! <laughs> yeah, we should, uh... We should go see what she wants before she gets mad at us. Very much so. <clears throat> okay. Oh my god, my mom's friend is so loud. <laughs> so, uh, moving over to her, she finishes what she's doing, finishes counting all the money, takes a look at the time, and she stands up, she takes the pens and pencils out of her hair and Set them down on the table and takes a really, really good stretch. And as she's stretching, you won't happen to notice that she's pretty jacked. Like, <laughs> not not as oh. jacked as Ifrit, but if her and Ifrit were the same size, the only their their only physical difference aside from the skin tone and the hair color would be their muscle capacity. Can she catch me eyeing her abs? Hmm. Roll a charisma save. Do I have to wait this this means I need to, to fail. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck my charisma! <laughs> oh, well, I'd roll it twice by mistake. My bad. Well, it's not—it's not a total failure, but uh, she does. She she catches you uh, eyeing her just ever so slightly, and she chuckles in response. I say, "Bitch, you're hot." <laughs> oh, thanks, sweetheart. I know, but. <laughs> Wow. I am taken. And she, oh she, she winks at you after she says that part. Oh my god. Damn. Angela, stop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jesus yeah, so Christ. Cool. Well then. Anyway. The mirror has a girl really, really fits. Compliments to me aside. It's, uh time we get down to what I summoned you all for. So, <clears throat> it's come to my attention that an, an associate of mine is going through some difficulties to put it lightly and they have asked me for my assistance though because of my role here and on the other taverns I run I can't go and help them in the manner that they need if you catch where I'm going and thus, I mentioned to them that you all have been in the village for quite a while, and you have very so eloquently shown to me that you are capable of handling the problem and not, not getting too crazy with it, but... You all can hold your own. And thus, I recommended to her that I can send some people her way. And while, in hindsight, now that I'm actually saying this, I pretty much voluntold slash hired you all against your will to go and deal with this issue. But eventually you all were going to wind up there anyway. So... Yeah, uh, to get into specifics, actually, wait, 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 she, she snaps her fingers and a mirage of herself appears, 
and it vanishes and then it immediately returns with a fresh tray of cold drinks please have ha, have a have a sweet have a sweet seat darlings ah, um, much obliged this is this is quite the situation that my associate is in <clears throat> wow she this is real good. she takes a seat herself and she begins to explain. So, this associate of mine. Their name is Francesca. I call her Frank or Frankie for short. And we've known each other for a while. We both entered the tavern business together. And she went off in one direction. I went another one. And... She lives in a city far, far, far east of here. And in accordance to the rest of the continent, uh, she lives on the technology-based side of the place. Oh. And the name of that city... <clears throat> it is called Starla. Spelled Z T E R L H A. And That's when you get there, you, you really you can't miss it. Like there's this giant skyscraper, and there's constant flashing lights and whatnot happening all over the place. And it's pretty much where anyone who's into the whole, uh, what do the kids call it, uh, that their cyberpunk scene, their techno scene, what have you, basically it's the place where all the tech junkies want to go. Yashua cringes for a moment <laughs> when she said cyberpunk. <laughs> and, uh... Lately, there's been some really disturbing things taking place. Such as, from what she told me, people going missing, important technology being stolen. Um, she, and I, I, I told her to double check on this one, she may have found a lead into a slavery cult ring that is stealing people's free will it, it sounded absolutely crazy to me but I have heard worse but I, I told her to double check that particular piece of information before I sent you all off to having to deal with that also her and her grandmother are not on the greatest of terms. And her grandmother is one of three political heads of the city. And Frankie is the second and the third no one really knows anything about and you know how people have their rumors and they spread their propaganda and false information to get people to join their sides and twist and spin messages I know that's happened where you all come from at the very least and Yashua chuckles <laughs> yeah and if anything above all else as a personal request from me I am asking you to find out and discover the truth behind what's really going on over there and just Keep an eye on Frankie. 
she's, uh... She hasn't really had a very good time these last few months. And I can tell when someone's at the end of their rope. Mm. Hmm. Also, uh, an associate of Frankie is sending one of her very well-trusted contacts to, in a sense, be your tour guide and meet you all halfway whenever you decide to make your way towards Sterla. Right. Mm. When Angela mentioned uh, a slave, a slave ring or uh, slavers, slave cult ring, a slave cult ring, Yashua, for a brief moment, had like a serious and an agitated look on his face, and like he just clenched his fist for, for like a brief moment. Do you want Angela to take note of this? Yes, please. Okay. <clears throat> so, she notices your expression change, and she was in the middle of taking a sip of her drink, but her motherly instincts uh, kick into overdrive, and she puts her drink down and she places a ha she places her right hand on your hand <clears throat> on your left and she just calmly asks you what's the matter sweetheart something about what i said clearly bothered you uh. oh <sighs> i guess the cat's out of the bag now uh, I just had, a uh, history with, uh, slavers before. Uh, I'm not going to pry, but you should use that frustration that slipped out as further drive to get to the bottom of whatever the root cause may be. Hmm. Don't worry about that. I'll be sure to get into the bottom of that. Good to hear. Good to hear indeed. Ladies, my other two rays of <laughs> sunshine, what about you two? After Wait, Finn and Tiara here? No, 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 she's talking to you and Drava. Oh, shit! <laughs> yeah, after uh, Angela calls you to her rays of sunshine... A driver starts oh. frantically drinking what's left in her glass. Go, 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 go. We're going to a new town. Oh, honey, I don't. I think you might have misunderstood. You're not going to another town. You're going to an entirely different city. You know good enough. Same thing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well. Um, I must say, I am quite excited to see a new place in this world, and uh, uh, I want to resolve the issues in that place, in all seriousness. Hmm. Slavery. Hmm. Yoshua, I think I relate to your character in that way. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think I relate to Yoshua in that My character relates to Yoshua in that way, the whole entire... Uh, Slavery part. 
after <clears throat> other ray of sunshine are you done drowning yourself or do you want to refill and Drava Drava looks at Angela and her eyes dart to the glass full of juice and her eyes are saying refill as she is too flustered to speak <laughs> well, I'll just... I put my I put my hand on Draper's shoulder and then I look at uh, Angela. <laughs> She'll be okay. I just figured. To... Words of affection. Oh. I figured she wouldn't be able to handle it. And Mayor, you, you hear Mayor very loudly cough. <clears throat> Oh. Honey, stop teasing her. Where is my super suit? <laughs> <laughs> and a Angela hears Mary. She's like, oh, okay, fine. I'll stop if you ask me. God, I love Angela, man. <laughs> anyway, so. With that... All that being said, and well, you all effectively have your next your next destination and goal in mind. Ah, uh, you all are ready. Yes. Yes, ma'am. I'm not. Oh. I have some prepping to do. And my last confrontation. Yashua pulls out his revolvers, and it's all beaten up. Oh. I need to do some maintenance before I get started. Uh, <laughs> that I, that uh... rope of a shot really messed up my revolver. Oh, dear. Yeah, I, uh... <laughs> I forgot how strong my girls were from... I'm going to be completely honest with you. Uh. Hmm. Hand those over. Huh? Uh. Alright. She. Uh, she. She's taking a long and hard look at them. And her eyes flicker from gray to blue and then back to gray for, for a quick second and she calls over the mayor oh large majestic lion man of mine could you toss me that thing please and mayor <laughs> breaks down into a borderline hysterical laughing mess as he responds <laughs> oh darling it's been how many months since you've called me that as he pulls uh, a very large crystal out of his uh bag and tosses it over to angela and hmm. she responds with you're the greatest and she puts the broken revolvers on the ground and she puts the crystal on top of the revolvers and she punches straight through the crystal and shatters it uh, oh. into very, very, very many pieces. What's Drava's reaction? <laughs> Just uh, shaking. Uh, <laughs> Dra Drava uh, stops drinking uh, her juice and she... Uh, and she like stops herself mid swallow to where she nearly starts choking, and she's just looking at Angela like, "Oh my God, what is she doing?" <laughs> and Angela, she raises her right index finger, traces a very small ring of fire, and she places it down onto the crystal covered revolvers. 
and they they begin to glow and they're they're glowing like a white hot type of glow but then a few seconds later they cool off and they have become entirely different weapons they are still revolvers but their properties and their stats have changed so, um you're telling me she punched a crystal the gun started to burn white yep. reaching kelvin and instantly cool off yep this world is fucking metal <laughs> Yeah, Angela, what the fuck, bro? <laughs> I'm a yeah. Angela. Angela's cracked. Yeah. She really is. Yasho is just observing, he's all like, my stars. I... I figured I could... speed along your... Preparation. I was gonna buy new revolvers, but that works too, I guess. Hang on, so I'm gonna close... <laughs> that works, I guess. I'm gonna close my window real quick. Yep. So well, because literally moments after she started doing that, Yasha was gonna pull out the sniper rifle and check for damages, but. He got totally distracted by Angela. <laughs> oh my god. Because, <laughs> you know, punching a crystal... Yeah. Setting the revolvers on fire... And instantly crafting new weapons. Yeah. Yeah. See... That's, that's crazy. Oh, Sunny, Sunny, Sunny. There is so much more that you haven't seen yet. Yeah. Granted, we could do the same thing, but not like that. Requires a lot of resources. Hmm. But well, you just, yeah. you just did it like, ugh. Yeah. Man, magic is so convenient. Oh, oh, indeed it is. Indeed it is. Uh -huh. Anyway, I do hope they are to your liking, as I, I crafted them in a manner of just going based off of your fashion sense uh, I think I did a, a pretty good job if I do say so myself very because flashy they're appearing. very beautiful too Yashua is like expecting the revolvers for they're quite large but incredibly light what material is this made out of? Uh, well... The... They are mostly made out of that crystal that my loving husband tossed over to me. However, that was a crystal made of a, a, a scale of an adamantoise's shell, a few a few sheets of mithril and a couple of pure magic crystals most of which have been uh, crushed and then smelted and reforged several times over to in a way double the magical potency within them and uh, Rick appearance wise these are what your new guns look like oh Jazz hands, let me see. But they are purple instead of white. Oh! That's cool. Uh, anyway, 
Angel looks up at the time. Ah, it's about time to open up shop. So, if you all want to go stretch your legs for a bit, we'll take a walk and go do your preparations and whatnot, or if you want to sit around and have a meal and talk to whoever else wants to show up, feel free. But I am going to go ahead and get to work. Thanks again. Of Thank you, Queen. Of course, <laughs> sweethearts. Anyone who is... Well... Anyone who has as high of a spirit to do good as you all, and have been able to essentially befriend everyone here in the village, they're family to me. So, she gets a grin on her face, and she... Uh, silently cast her mirage spell to which are four of her as she has the uh the oh, fuck, what's the thing the, uh, the the devilish starry anime eyes uh as an expression she sneaks up behind all of you and the four of her hug you at once and she says uh from this point forward all of you are now my sons and daughters Oh. Oh. You are now uh. family. And there will always be a place here for you. Yasho is just like real, real stiff because he's not used to this kind of interaction. Right. Thank you. Meanwhile, you're you're stiff as hell and Drava is a is a, a shaky mess. Because, again, overwhelming levels of affection that she's not used to. Well, she hasn't been used to for ten years. No. And Mel, how are you reacting to this? You just hug her back. <laughs> <laughs> I started tearing up and I started hugging her. There was like, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't that deep. <laughs> <laughs> Dream was like, bitch, that's my wife. <laughs> oh, oh. Hey, Yashua said it, not me. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. <laughs> nah, this was out of character. I know, I know. <laughs> Alright, and with... Hey, the character. <laughs> and with that, today's session is now coming to an end as I hit the stop recording button.